Welcome to Worship at Emmanuel. Welcome to church. This week we will discover or rediscover that each one of us, each member of the church, each member of God's family, each part of the body of Christ, is made for full-time ministry. Nothing fills me with more joy than when a new member at Emmanuel, well, and old members too, discovers that God has not only saved them through his grace, but also equips them through his grace to do good things for others. And not only that, he also created us to be good at doing good things in a specific ministry role or function. Now, I hope that you already know what you're good at and soon discover, if you haven't already, just how God wants you to use those gifts to build his church. After all, I may be the senior pastor here to Manuel, but we are all in full-time ministry together. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church. Today's reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4-12. through 12. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Blessed are those whose hope is in the Lord. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord upholds the widow and the fatherless. The Lord will reign forever. Yes, the Lord reigns over every nation, language, and people. Yet we have not loved all people as Christ has loved us. The fruits of our faith are not always evident, but our Lord is gracious and merciful, and he offers his forgiveness to all. Take a moment now to make your confession to the Lord. Heavenly Father, We have failed to love others as you love them. We have failed to reflect your grace to the world in service and sacrifice. We have failed in our actions and in our unwillingness to act. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may follow you in joy. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, sent Jesus Christ into our world to serve and save all people showing no partiality or favoritism. By his death, he forgives all our sins. By his resurrection, he destroys death forever and offers us eternal life. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven in Christ. We are set free to love and serve our neighbors. 
Amen. Good morning, everybody. My name's Laura Gilliland. I'm a preschool teacher here at Emmanuel, and I'm excited to do the children's message today because I'm in the mood for building with blocks, with Legos. Do you guys like to build with Legos? I don't know about you, but my preschool class sure loves to use them. They use them almost every day in school. Well, I'm gonna grab a couple of these Legos because today I'm feeling like I wanna build a church a church out of Legos. Let's see what I can do here. Put some of these pieces down. You know, as I build this church, it kind of gets me thinking a little bit about our church here at Emmanuel. We are a church, we are a school. We have a head pastor, his name is Pastor Tiemann. And, you know, sometimes when I think about that, I think, you know, I wonder if, if we think that Pastor Tiemann is the only person who can give us spiritual guidance, who can tell us about Jesus, who can tell us about God's love and how he sent his son Jesus to us to be our savior. Well, you know what? Then I think about the Bible verse for today. It comes from 1 Peter. I've got my Bible right here and I've got the verse tabbed right here. It's towards the end of the Bible. So watch as I open. I'm gonna open past all those big pages there and kind of get towards the end of the Bible. And it comes from 1 Peter and it says this. It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Wait, it doesn't just say a pastor is a chosen person, a royal priest. It says you are a chosen person. You are part of a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people who belongs to God. And now here's the next part. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Boys and girls, we are called to be priests. We are called to be those people to share the good news of Jesus. You know, as I build my church here, it kind of makes me think, we're kind of like these pieces of the church. We're like the building blocks of the church. We are the church, but yet we go out into this community, into this world, and we share the good news of Jesus. And this is all because of what Jesus did for us that he came as our savior. So let's share that good news with others so they can hear it too. Let's be the building blocks of royal priesthood that we're called to be. Will you pray with me and fold your hands? You can just listen to my prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to take our punishment and for making us your special royal priesthood. Your children, help us to share about you in your name we pray, amen. Have a great day, everyone.
I asked my wife Sharon this question one time. How many great preachers in the world do you think there are? <laughs> she said, one less than you think there is. <laughs> well, I want to ask you a question this morning. What is the secret to greatness? Just contemplate that for a moment. Now, if you went to Wall Street and asked the question, what's the secret to greatness? Wall Street would say, money and lots of it. If you were to go to Washington and ask, what's the secret to greatness? Washington would say, political clout and a lot of it. If you were to go to Hollywood and ask, what is the secret to greatness? Hollywood would say, fame and lots of it. Well, the greatest man who ever lived, the only man who truly deserves to be called great in every sense of the word, Jesus Christ. He had a very different answer. He said, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Success and greatness in the kingdom of God is far different than what it is on planet Earth. If you want to climb to the top of the ladder in God's eyes, well, you've got to take the rungs of service. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. The secret to greatness in the kingdom of God is not how many servants you have, but what kind of a servant you are. Now, here's the key question for the day. Are you more interested in being served in the church, or are you more interested in being a servant in the church? A first grade teacher asked her class the question, what do you do to help at home? And one by one, the answers came back. One little girl said, well, I dry the dishes. And one little boy said, I feed the dog. Another child said, I sweep the floor. And everybody gave an answer one after the other. But one little boy sitting in the back, he didn't say anything. And so the teacher looked at him and said, Danny, what do you do to help out at home? And he said, I stay out of the way. Well, that's great for a little child, but there are far too many members in the church who just stay out of the way. Don't be one of them. Last week, as we began our series, We Are the Church, I talked to you about not going to church, but being the church wherever you are. And one of the ways you do that is by serving. So you're going to find out today, once again, that the Bible teaches that every member of the church is a minister. And every member of the church should be involved in ministry. Now, I may be the senior pastor in this church, but I'm not the only minister. I mean, I'm looking out today at hundreds of ministers, including you. And I want to share with you today why you should get involved in ministry and be the minister that God wants you to be. So, first of all, you were literally created for ministry. You were created for service. You were created to do good works. Now, just about all of us have heard this Bible verse, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. We all know it very well. But we often neglect verse 10, which says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You see, everything that God created, he created for a purpose. And so birds were created to sing, bees were created to give honey, cows were created to give milk, fish were created to swim, dogs were created to cheer us up on a bad day. <laughs> and you were created for ministry. You know, one of the most misunderstood words of our day is that word, minister. Because people use it as a synonym for someone like me who's ordained or theologically trained in a seminary. So you might be surprised to learn that the word minister derives from the Latin word for servant and is based on the root word minus, which means less. 
So technically, a minister is someone of a lesser rank or status who simply wants to serve. Now, think about this. Why doesn't God take you to heaven the moment he creates faith in your heart and accepts you as a part of his family? Well, the reason is very simple. He has a ministry for you to do while you're here on earth. He has a servant he wants you to perform. And so, the grace of God that enabled us to be saved, well, it's the same grace of God that enables us to serve. So again, this may shock many of you to hear this, but the pastor is not the only person in the church called to ministry, nor are full-time staff people the only people called to ministry. Every Christian has been called to minister, and every Christian has been called to ministry. Now that doesn't mean, obviously, that every Christian is called to be a pastor, or called to work full-time at a church. But every Christian is called to serve God full-time. You just can't get away from it. God expects you to minister to others. In fact, he created you to do so. God has also given you the equipment to do the ministry of the church, and that equipment is called your spiritual gifts. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Romans 12, 6. The fact is every Christian is gifted. We all have spiritual gifts. Now, we don't all have the same gifts, but we all have certain gifts that God has given us so we can do what he wants us to do for other people. You see, God never wastes anything. Every spiritual gift and natural ability that you have, God gave it to you to be used in service and ministry. Again, 1 Peter 4.10 is, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. Now the good news is that there are more than enough gifts in the church to do everything that God wants the church to do. So, do you know what I'm looking at today as I look out at all of you? I'm looking at a lot of unopened, unused gifts. (laughs) I mean, this is like Christmas in September. I mean, you know the charge you get out of seeing all those gifts under the Christmas tree? It's awesome. But you know what? No matter how much you pay for a gift or how wonderful and expensive a gift might be, if it's never opened... It's absolutely worthless. Now, I think every church should be determined to help their people discover their gifts, develop their gifts, and deploy their gifts in the service of others. And that's exactly what we are here to do. So you'll find in your bulletin or you'll find on the website a link where you can explore and then help you discover your spiritual gift or gifts if you're unsure what they might be. So I urge you to use it or simply talk with Sharon Teeman, director of Connect Ministries, or myself or another staff member about an area where you might serve. You see, I believe one of the reasons why church members get frustrated and irritated and, well, sometimes lose interest in the church is because They've either never discovered what their gifts are or they know what their gifts are and they're not given an opportunity to use them. The truth is all of us have more gifts than we realize. We just have to make sure we're using them in the right way and in the right place. You know, I had a church member come to me uh, just a few weeks ago and he said, Pastor, Is it a sin to play golf on Sunday? And I said, well, I've seen you play, and I think it's a sin for you to play any day of the week. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's a sin. It's a sin when we don't use our gifts to glorify God or serve our neighbor. So again, do you have the attitude of a servant? Quite frankly, it's against our nature to want to serve others. 
When the average person looks for a church, do you know the question they're usually asking? How can this church meet my needs? When you begin to really mature as a Christian, then you begin to ask instead, how can I be used in this church to meet the needs of others? I heard Rick Warren once uh, say something, well, that I'll, I'll never forget. He said, people are so obsessed with living as long as they can. So they watch their diet, they exercise, they take vitamins, all good things. But he said, that's not the real issue. It's not how long you live that matters. It's how you live that matters. The truth is, as a believer in Christ, you have all eternity to live, but how you live now can affect other people's eternity. As 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, keep busy in your work for the Lord, since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever without value. Can you say that about everything that you do? Let's face it, a lot of what you and I do doesn't mean a hill of beans in eternity. But nothing you do in the Lord's work is ever without eternal benefits. But let me be clear once again, as we learned last week, church is something we are and not just something that we go to. So we ought to realize that the use of our gifts isn't limited to the confines of traditional rules or a building during the weekend gathering. And so someone who has the gift of teaching can just as effectively serve God's kingdom teaching in a public school as he or she can leading a Bible study. A person might be just as good of a witness by volunteering at the food pantry as in the church nursery or a craftsman who worked on the Habitat for Humanity project and his or her community would be just as much a follower of Jesus when he or she is constructing the manger and stable for the annual Sunday School Christmas program. You see, if you really believe that you don't go to church, but that you are the church, you'll see serving opportunities at every corner and on every day of the week. Now, please understand that I am not discounting all the wonderful roles and responsibilities people participate in each week when they serve on the church's ministry-specific teams. Our church thrives each and every week because, well, of, of all of you, all the people who volunteer their time and utilize their gifts for what happens right here inside our walls. But when you adopt the I am the church philosophy, instead of just the I'm going to church mindset, ministry takes on a much more holistic and integrated flavor. You start understanding that you are the church. You are the church when you're at home, at school, at work, at the Little League field, or in the checkout line. And yes, you are the church when you're here at church too. So I want to close by asking you to imagine something. You've died. And, well, let's say you've been in heaven by earth standards for 50 years. And somebody comes up to you and says, I just want to thank you for what you've done for me. And you look at that person and say, I'm sorry, I don't think I know you. And then they say, no, you, you don't know me. But I know you. You were a servant in the church. You performed this ministry in the church, and it was in that church that I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And you had a part in making sure that I got to heaven. And I just wanted to thank you. So here's my question. Do you think it would be worth that to serve God? If I knew of a more significant way to invest my life than to do it in serving Jesus Christ, that's what I'd be doing. But there isn't. There is no work too small that God doesn't notice it 
and God doesn't reward it. Today, we wanna help you get ready to serve God, understanding that every single one of you is called to full-time ministry and equipping you to use your God-given gifts. I am the church and you are the church. We are the church, amen? We join our voices now with all who worship God, confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all the nations of the world, their leaders and residents, that peace may reign and that the church would be a faithful witness of Jesus' love and service in every place. Lord of all nations, Grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all those who work in the service of others, that their work might be blessed by God and appreciated by others. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all those who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray for comfort in the face of grief. Especially, we pray for the family of Jerry Eschweiler. Grant that all those who mourn would indeed find hope in the resurrection to eternal life with Jesus. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all those who have abandoned the faith, Lord, that they would once again hear your word and receive your good gifts. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all Christians throughout the world, that their faith and good works would overflow as a blessing to many others. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. For all who are sick, injured, preparing for surgery, and for those recovering, especially Roger Baldwin, Ray Boyer, Frank and Faith Brosnack, Kathy, uh, Kathy Duddleston, Marin Griffith, Art Lutheris, Amy Morgan, Nancy Newman, Jeff Shakatano, Jan Smith, and those that we name in our heart, that God would grant them healing according to his good and gracious will. Lord, also bless Soren Darby Hanpa, infant son of Eric Hanpa and Laura Kelly Metzger, and grandson of Dave and Kimberly Schumacher, as he joins the family of God through the waters of holy baptism in the days ahead. Lord of all nations, grant us grace to love all people in every place. Lord, into your hands we place all these things, knowing that you hear us and remain faithful. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Jesus never said to go to church, but he did say that he would build his church. And he did say that his followers would be his church. Jesus invites you to follow him and be his church wherever you are. And one way to do that is to give generously to the church so that we might continue to share Jesus with our community and the world. There are several ways that you can give your offering to the church, and we're thankful for anything that you are able to give. Learn more by going to give.emmanuelcl.org. We're also grateful if you would fill out a connection card. Just capture the QR code below or visit connect.emmanuelcl.org to sign in. And just let us know that you are here. We are so glad that you were with us to worship today. Please share this service with others so that they too might hear the good news, that they too might become a part of the church. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.